20 years ago this week, a killing spree that made international headlines started right here in the Twin Cities. Andrew Cunanan will forever be known as the man who murdered fashion designer Gianni Versace. The fashion murder in Miami Beach. Gianni Versace, fashion designer to the rich and famous, is shot dead. It was a shocking murder. The designer, to stars like Princess Diana and Madonna, gunned down in broad daylight right in front of his Florida mansion. Within hours, a suspect is named. It's Andrew Cunanan, who's at the top of the FBI's 10 most wanted list for a murder spree that started in Minneapolis. WCCO's Esme Murphy was on the case from the beginning in 1997. This is the travel bag that we believe Andrew Cunanan brought to Minneapolis when he arrived on April 25th. It's got his name on it. He brought his belongings in this. It's a chilling look at the handwriting of the mystery man from California, a man who looks different in every photograph, and whose name is pronounced differently over the course of a three-month manhunt. It's a story that took me across the country in search of the killer. No one knows where Andrew Cunanan is right now, and everybody is afraid that he will strike again. Andrew Cunanan leaves his hometown of San Diego, saying he has some business in Minneapolis. David Matson, a former lover and popular Minneapolis architect, picks him up at the airport Friday night. Cunanan stays with a mutual gay friend, Jeffrey Trail, seen here in a blonde wig with Cunanan. The three men end up at Madsen's loft in the North Loop on Sunday night. On Monday, neither Jeffrey Trail or David Madsen show up for work. On Tuesday, April 29th, friends are worried and call police. We knocked. Hello, hello, it's us. Linda Elwell says they hear Madsen's dog and some whispers inside. They leave without opening the door, but there's a feeling something's not right. They asked the manager to check a few hours later. I cracked the door and opened it, looked to my left, and saw this, this thing wrapped in an, a rug that would appear to be a body. Jennifer Weiberg then and now. Well, there was blood all over. I remember seeing dark hair sticking out of the top of the carpet, later mentioning that it didn't look like David's hair. After some confusion about who in fact has been brutally beaten to death with a hammer, police identify the victim as Jeffrey Trail. It is from the moment of Jeffrey Trail's brutal murder that one of the most profound mysteries of Andrew Cunanan's bloody rampage begins. Investigators say Cunanan and Matson spend the next five days together, the first two of those days inside the apartment with Jeffrey Trail's decaying body. But they now believe that Matson was being held hostage with a gun Andrew Cunanan had stolen from Jeffrey Trail. It was a gun Cunanan would use in all the other murders. Body was lying right here. On May 3rd, David Matson is found shot to death by a lake near Rush City in Chisago County. Andrew Cunanan is now a suspect in two murders. The next day, there is a third. The nationwide manhunt for Andrew Cunanan moves to the streets of the wealthy Gold Coast along Lake Michigan and Chicago. On Monday, May 4th, multimillionaire Lee Miglin is found shot and tortured in the garage of his townhome. Around the corner, police find a red Jeep Cherokee with Minnesota plates. The Jeep belongs to victim David Matson. The search for Andrew Cunanan continues throughout the East Coast. Friends of his have been notified that he could be in their area. But exactly which city, exactly where, no one knows for sure. On May 9th, there's another victim. Now here in New Jersey, authorities let us this evening get a closer look at the murder scene that claimed the life of last night's victim. William Reese is a caretaker at a Civil War cemetery in New Jersey. Cunanan takes Reese's life for a new getaway car. He is now on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. Investigators would later determine Cunanan is hiding in plain sight for the next two months in Miami South Beach. Then on July 15th, Versace is gunned down. Here in Miami, they are continuing to mourn the death of Gianni Versace, gathering in front of the home where he was gunned down yesterday. Across the street, the world media is gathered to cover the death and the suspect, Andrew Cunanan. This guy um, knows we're after him, and uh, he knows he's being sought, and uh, I don't know that he's, I think the end result's gonna end up, uh, either he's gonna commit suicide or he's going to uh, end up in a shootout with the police. Lieutenant Dale Barsness is the head of homicide for Minneapolis police. His prediction turns out to be true. Eight days after the Versace murder, Cunanan commits suicide in a nearby houseboat. 
20 years later, Barsness is haunted by the question why. He definitely wanted to reestablish a relationship with uh, David Madsen. Lieutenant Barsness believes the killing spree was triggered when Cunanan, who had bought a one-way ticket to Minneapolis, was rejected by Madsen that weekend. Barsness thinks Cunanan became enraged, beating Crail to death and holding Matson captive. He was terrified of this guy, especially when he saw what he did to uh, Jeffrey Trail. Barsness insists law enforcement here and across the country did all they could at the time. I mean, I don't know what else we could have done. But friends of David Matson say there were early missteps in the investigation. Remember the black bag with Cunanan's name tag? It was kind of embarrassing to me. Minneapolis Lieutenant Robert Titchich admits for days he hadn't bothered to look at the tag, never seeing it actually bared Andrew Cunanan's name. Investigators also missed a pair of bloody jeans. Apartment manager Jennifer Weiberg found them days later after police had processed the scene. At the time, I thought it was pretty pathetic. And then there is the moment early on when Matson went missing. His friends went to the loft with police but didn't enter over concerns officers would kill his beloved Dalmatian if it attacked. Convinced they heard whispers, they wonder if Matson and Cunanan were still there. Perhaps a missed opportunity to stop a serial killer spree before it started. If the two officers and I had made a different decision, um, you know, we could have maybe saved David's life and uh, Lee's and William Reese's and Gianni Versace's, but uh, we'll never know that now. And that's, that's the hard part. Twenty years later, we do know more about Andrew Cunanan. He was foremost a pathological liar, claiming to have been born to a wealthy family. In fact, his money came from older, often closeted gay men he dated. Among the questions that remain, why Lee Miglin in Chicago? Miglin's wife and family insist to this day Miglin did not know Cunanan. And why Versace? Well, many investigators say it could be this. Versace was everything Cunanan wasn't, a gay man with a loving partner, who was wealthy, successful, and brilliant, of course. Uh, and do most investigators agree the reason that Cunanan went on this spree was because he couldn't get David Madsen back? You know, certainly the investigators, Amelia, here do believe mm -hmm. that that was, is what triggered this spree. Lieutenant Dale Barsis told me a week ago five men, wonderful men, innocent men, died that spring and summer because of Andrew Cunanan's selfishness and rage that he could not win David Madsen back. Unbelievable. Yeah. I can't believe it's 20 years already. Yeah. Unbelievable, yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Esme. Esme, thank you.